Uh, for more, let's go to Rome correspondent uh, Josephine McKenna. Uh, Josephine, uh, before we go to the heart of the matter, which is this tussle uh, uh, over uh, how to, the, whether or not there was a cover-up uh, with uh, the more conservative wing of the church, um, the Vatican issuing um, rectification when it came to the remarks we heard just now in that report? Yes, I think uh, it was a surprising reaction uh, from the Vatican, but uh, perhaps not so, because this was the Pope who, back in 2013, shortly after his election, was the Pope who said, who am I to judge when the issue of homosexuality was raised? And and that's that made headlines around the world. So... This, was, this is a pope who has been uh, more open to issues like homosexuality and uh, marriage annulment within the church. And perhaps from that point of view, uh, his initial comment was quite shocking, uh, particularly because he's come from Ireland, a country that has legalised same-sex marriage and where there's a prime minister who's openly gay. So that clarification was perhaps uh, important to clarify exactly what his point of view was and, and to put that to rest. Now, about these accusations uh, from uh, Archbishop Vigano, uh, how credible are they? Well, first of all, I think uh, the, the allegations do have to be taken seriously because it puts the Vatican, it puts Pope Francis in the centre of this uh, dispute and claims that uh, he was really complicit in a cover-up, which is really explosive stuff. Uh, now, there's plenty of debate about Carlo Maria Vigano. He's a conservative. He's aligned very closely with uh, Pope Francis's conservative enemies. Uh, and there have been questions raised about his allegations in the past. He's uh, open to all sorts of conspiracy, th conspiracy theories. And there are also suggestions that he himself quashed a sexual abuse uh, investigation in Minnesota when he was ambassador in Washington. Having said that, these allegations are explosive. They have uh, exposed the open warfare between the conservatives and the liberals within the Catholic Church, within the Vatican, and p the, the conservatives who really do want to bring Pope Francis down. Now, that doesn't mean that Pope Francis doesn't need to confront this issue. By telling the media they need to work it out for themselves and that he did not want to comment is only going to allow this issue to fester, and that's not good enough for Catholics, particularly in the United States, who are still reeling from the Pennsylvania report that claimed that uh, up to 1,000 children had been sexually abused by clerics over the uh, decades. So uh, a big issue here that is not going to go away and that is ultimately that could, could ultimately affect the fate of Pope Francis and his the perceptions of his pontificate. Yeah, and, and something we'll be mentioning in the next hour in the France 24 debate, Josephine, is uh, how do you handle those cover-ups? We saw that letter last week before the trip to Ireland uh, by the Pope calling on people to uh, denounce wrong when they see it, but it wasn't enough for many in Ireland. That's right. And uh, victims not only in Ireland, but in countries like Chile, Australia, and other countries around the world, including the U.S., uh, they've seen the apologies, they've heard the apologies, now they want to see action. Now, the Pope said he was not willing to establish a tribunal at the Vatican to hear these cases. That's not going to be enough to satisfy the victims and their supporters. They want to see justice, they want to see uh, procedures in place, and they want to see guarantees that this sort of thing is being stamped out within the Catholic Church. The suggestion that Pope Francis is involved in some sort of uh, cover-up and that he's complicit in uh, these allegations affecting the ex-Cardinal uh, Theodore McCarrick is not going to help this situation uh, at all. And we'll be talking about it in the next hour in the France 24 debate. Josephine McKenna, many thanks for that live update from Rome.